All right, hey there, it's Julie Brad with Book Launchers with the first look book reviews. Welcome, welcome, very excited. <laughs> very excited to be doing today's video. Lots of great stuff in today's session for you all. I'll just give folks a couple minutes to join us before I dive too far into the wonderful content that we're going to hit. Hey, Dale, welcome, hello, so glad to have you. <laughs> All right, so today in the first look book review, of course we're doing a book review. We've also got, uh, I'm gonna explain how you can get your books entered into the review. Uh, and then we're gonna do a prize draw, lots of prizes, cause that's fun, just cause I like to give stuff away. My dream is to be like Ellen someday, you know, <laughs> have everybody in the audience get a really wicked cool prize, wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> Maybe we can partner up and do something, Dale. <laughs> Have big prizes for everybody in, in our shows. Uh, but uh, that'll be coming up. Um, we're also going to talk about getting your book into bookstores. And uh, because I had this big conversation with a Tesla, <laughs> yes, I would love to give Teslas to everyone, including myself. That would be fantastic. Could you imagine? We are in LA, so you know, I just got to call up Elon and, and uh, get a hookup. That's, I'm sure it's that simple, right? <laughs> Uh, all right, so we'll also talk about getting your book into bookstores, and I'm going to also, uh, <laughs> you get a Tesla and you get a Tesla. <laughs> all right, hey Jacqueline, hey Paul, hey Dave. Uh, well, so glad to have you all here. Uh, so we're gonna do the book group, um, so we're gonna talk about what you need to do to get your book into bookstores. I'm also going to just touch on a couple stats, not gonna be boring, um, but just hit on a few stats because I did this, uh, this expo last week, this Innovate and Grow Expo with a bunch of startup companies and had a long conversation with somebody who told me that book sales are dying. So I just want to, you know, hit the reminder button for all of you folks thinking of writing a book uh, to give you the real numbers behind this. Our print, our print books and book sales in general dying because uh, this guy was, you know, adamant that they were. Uh, but I know the numbers and some of you probably know the numbers. So I'll touch on that in a sec. Okay. Um, of course, this is in addition to my uh, weekly release of YouTube videos. So thank you to everyone who stops by on Fridays when I release my weekly YouTube video. Every other Tuesday, we're going live and probably on Facebook for the foreseeable future since YouTube has decided that I am not YouTube live a video worthy for whatever reason. <laughs> I'm such a spammer, I guess. <laughs> Speaking of spammer, if you haven't checked out uh, the last YouTube video that I put out on your email newsletter as an author, your, your best marketing tool is your email newsletter. And uh, in that video, I recruited my husband, uh, Dave Penyak, who is an actor. And uh, <laughs> I pretended to be an actor and we put, in, put up some cheesy pickup lines to illustrate what it's like to be a spammer. <laughs> <laughs> so you can check that out uh, at booklaunchers.tv if you're not watching this on my YouTube channel. All right, so first up, the book, the first look book review. All right, so um, it's a little shiny, so I know it's kind of reflecting funky, uh, but uh, this is the winner of the first look book review, uh, the first one, actually. Um, this is by Katie Weiser, and it's the answers to the top 20 interview questions. And I, I've had a chance to go through the book, which was a fantastic. And I've already posted a review on Amazon. And if you're wondering how you can get your book submitted for a review, uh, just stay tuned. I know it's backwards. I don't know how to make it not backwards, right? I could. How about being upside down and backwards? Now that's fun. <laughs> All you guys have to do is put this video in a mirror and it's probably going to read just fine. I don't know why uh, Facebook live videos do this, but they do. Um, so the, answer, the, the title is Answers to the Top 20 Interview Questions, Conquering the Job Interview Process. So uh, really this is a no fluff, straight to the point kind of book. Uh, and it really does cover a whole bunch of interview questions that you would face. Uh, a lot of them I've used myself when I've interviewed many, many people for different jobs uh, at book launchers and previous companies I've run and worked for. So really, really great book, easy to read, easy to use. Uh, welcome to everybody who just joined. You know, as, wave, say hello in the comments so we all know you're here. Uh, it's way more fun that way, um, you know, other than people, you know, people walk by and they see me talking to you so you can wave to them too. <laughs> in my office, you can see all the people. There's a meeting going on back there too so you guys can spy on whatever's going on there. The guy's been in, his off, in that room talking all day long. <laughs> 
Um, all right, so um, you'll uncover questions that trap that she talks about their traps, double edged double edged swords, and opportunities to toot your own home, toot your own home, toot your own horn. There you go. Um, so really solid book. I posted the review on Amazon if you do want to check it out. Um, I highly, highly recommend this book if you're looking for a job and even if you're hiring because I thought this was a good book as someone hiring to find new questions but also to kind of get a better sense of what would be good answers to some of the questions that we answer or we ask as an interviewer and maybe don't always know what would make a good answer or you know we're kind of just winging it. So this might make your preparation for your job interviews more thoughtful on both sides of the table. But yeah, well done, Katie. Uh, a couple things I wanted to note for everyone's benefit around this book. Uh, when she found out she won, so I'm gonna tell you in a minute how you can enter uh, to win, but when she found out she won, she contacted me and said, hey, listen, I wanna send you a printed copy so you have the best version of my book. I'd already bought it on Kindle, uh, but that's okay, because when I post the Amazon review, it is then a verified review, which is way better than just having somebody get a free copy of your book and put a review on there. Um, it just, Amazon gives it more cr credit and probably buyers do too. So um, when I put her review on, because I've already bought the Kindle, it shows up as an Amazon verified review. But very smart on her part, because now I have a physical pop copy so you guys can see it backwards. Uh, I used it to post on social media. And of course, if your book does perform better uh, in a uh, print version than a Kindle version, then this is a really, really smart way to go. And in her case, her book is very much a workbook. Um, and so if I had wanted to, I don't know if you guys can even see that with the lighting, but there's lines here. There we go. If I shift over here. So there's lines in here in all the pages uh, to help you craft your own question, uh, answers to the questions and kind of follow her star template. She has a, a temp, an acronym that she uses to help you know how to answer every single question using this star template. And uh, you have space in this book. So I thought it was really smart of her to send a printed copy in addition to uh, me reviewing the Kindle. Um, also, second thing I wanted to note that I think is very smart, and I've talked about this in some of my YouTube videos before as well, and that is on page two. So you open up the book, you've got the, the copyright information here, and then over here, uh, she has, and I know it's backwards for you guys, so I'm sorry. Uh, again, just hold up to a mirror and you're good. <laughs> Okay, so uh, this is an invitation to download, because one of the first things I thought when I opened up this book, I was like, oh great, I'm supposed to write in a book. And I don't know about you guys, but I feel weird about writing in books. I, there's something about it that just feels wrong to me. Um, so I don't like to do that, but she has templates inside uh, that you can go and download, very smart. Uh, so you put in your email address and then you get the templates to download so that you can print them off and use them over and over again for the questions. And so, yeah, so Dale, you don't like writing in books either, right? <laughs> It, it just you, something wrong about it. You don't want to damage these these beautiful beautiful products. Um, but one thing I'll note, Katie, is that I, and I don't know. I haven't received any other emails after I downloaded your template. But uh, this is a great opportunity to have people join your email list. And if you're doing that, then you need to tell them that they're now going to be on your email list. And if you're uh, not doing that you should but you got to make sure you tell them on this page and on your website as well um, that they're getting your email list the other thing to note is that because this is on page two uh, when i go into the look inside uh, version on amazon of your book uh, it shows up there so even if i don't buy your book i can get this so if that's the case 100 percent you want to be using that for email marketing because some people uh, may not buy your book they'll get your template and uh, and then that gives you at least an opportunity to offer some of your other services to them all right, so you guys taking notes for your own books because this is very smart marketing. Um, she's doing a lot of really, really great things there. Also, um, uh, another one, one other note. Uh, yeah, my inner librarian. <laughs> if you guys could see the chaos around me, you would know there's no inner librarian. <laughs> Yes, it is a brilliant use of real estate in the book. Very, very smart use. Um, the other thing is, uh, for, this is for Katie, but also again, for you guys to think about is if you're using the book as part of a tool to grow your business, build your brand, um, she doesn't mention her services that I saw on her website. She also offers corporate uh, career coaching type services as well as individual you know, interview prep and beyond. And she doesn't, uh, 
uh, she doesn't mention that in here. So I would highly, I mean, she has a bio, but that's it. So I would highly recommend you add a couple pages in the back of your book uh, to let people know what you do. And if you're a speaker, add a page for each of the kind of talks that you give. If you have courses, add a page at the back of your book um, to talk about the different courses and where they can go to find them. I mean, this is your book. Use it to grow your business. You've given massive, massive value in these pages for a very low cost. Uh, it's totally okay to sell what you do because a lot of times when somebody finishes their book, this book, they're going to go, I need more. And if it's right there, they're going to know how to find more. So I highly recommend you do that, Katie, and anybody else writing a book like this, uh, do that as well. Uh, okay, so how do you get your book in to be reviewed? It's very simple. First, subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is at booklaunchers.tv. And then underneath any of the videos, the, any of the recent videos, because it's much, much easier for me to keep track of and find your comments if you do it that way, uh, post a link to say, hey, listen, would love to have my book reviewed and post a link to ideally Amazon, but wherever your book is available. Uh, and if you don't have it in PDF, then you will have to contact me to get a printed copy into my hands. Uh, and, uh, and let me know that it's nonfiction because we're only doing nonfiction reviews here. Um, speaking of which, Paul just noted that uh, he's publishing a children's book and he de definitely recommend my YouTube channel even for that. So thanks, Paul. Uh, I always appreciate your comments and, and it's great to have you here on the live, the live video as well. So that's all you have to do to get your video or to get your book entered into the draw. And then uh, we will be doing another draw today for the next round. And anybody who puts their book in and asks to be uh, included in the review draw before uh, the next month, uh, I'll tell you when the next one will be. Uh, then you will be entered and uh, I will buy your book. And if I can give it a four or a five star review on Amazon, honestly, then I will. And if I can't, then I will be honest, but kind <laughs> in the live stream and I won't post anything on Amazon. <laughs> All right. Um, so yeah, Paul, do tell us about your children's book. I took a look at it. I think that was you. I looked at two children's books the last couple weeks. I think you posted a link, but maybe you didn't. Um, so yeah, tell us what it is. Link to it here. We all love to check it out. And, uh, and I know I have kids and uh, a kid, I should say. <laughs> My husband sometimes feels like a kid. Sorry, Dave. <laughs> that's a test to see if he's still listing. <laughs> okay. Um, so that's how to enter your uh, book into a draw uh, for a review. And also, I just want to give a shout out. Speaking of people who have been con uh, commenting and participating on my YouTube videos and who are here, uh, it's funny because it's true. All right, so he is still here. <laughs> uh, I just want to say thank you because it means so much to me to have people joining in, in the conversation and, and commenting on my videos and just letting me get to know you. Because, uh, you know, you, you record these videos not quite alone. I, I have help, but you record the videos and you're talking to yourself, really. So it's nice to know that I'm not actually completely crazy talking to myself all the time. <laughs> okay, so uh, Artemis Craig, Kevin McGuire, Warrior Chick, uh, Pankaj Sati, thank you so much. And a huge shout out to Dale Roberts, of course. He has a great YouTube channel, uh, so Dale Roberts Self Publishing check it out. Uh, he has a phenomenal content. I can't keep up. He's putting new stuff out every day, it seems like, uh, and really, really great for anybody uh, self-publishing. So check him out if you haven't already. Uh, okay. And the first prize, speaking of people who comment on my videos on YouTube, if you comment the day a video is released, which is Friday, most of the time, you will be entered into... <laughs> called wiener dog wiener dog how'd you get so long <laughs> that's fantastic i love it <laughs> i i don't i think i did check it out before but anyways it totally uh i think that's great we'll have to get that for jackson because he loves dogs okay so today's prize for anybody who comments on the first day a video comes out which is friday um is uh this fabulous book launchers mug and i know it's probably backwards for you but the hashtag is hashtag no boring books which is one of our mantras at book launchers so everyone who has uh, been commenting on the fridays when the book when the videos come out is entered in here so i'll be drawing from that hey <laughs> welcome welcome rosemary good to have you here from uh, from the island i believe uh unless you're not there right now okay so um the winner of this fabulous mug is kevin mcguire yay 
okay, so thank you. You have to contact me with your mailing address. And as long as you're in North America, I will be sending you one of these fabulous, no boring books, book launchers mugs. Uh, so send me your mailing address and we'll get that off to you. And if you're not in North America, we'll figure out some other prize uh, for that. Um, where can you buy the wiener dog book, Dale, <laughs> or the mug? For you, just uh, let me know where I can send it because, you know, uh, I owe ya. Okay, um, yeah, congrats, Kevin. <laughs> My husband doesn't even have one, so you're super special. <laughs> oh, awesome, thanks. Thanks, Rosemary, that's very, very cool. Okay, um, oh, but Kevin lives in either you came. Well, we'll figure something else for Kevin. That's totally fine. Um, and Dale, you can get his mug, how about that? <laughs> Okay, um, yeah, so Kevin's been an awesome, awesome supporter on my YouTube channel, so really pleased that he was the winner of that, but we'll figure out something else for him. Um, all right, so thank you, and again, if you wanna be entered in to win whatever prize we have, for the next couple uh, videos, it will be a fabulous mug, but I have some other prizes up my sleeve uh, that we'll do in the future. Okay, uh, all right. Getting your book into bookstores. Uh, before I do this, I just wanna quickly hit on some stats, uh, not to put you guys to sleep, uh, but because I had this extensive conversation, <laughs> Jacqueline, and <laughs> Jacqueline is uh, one of the fabulous folks that works uh, with us at Book Launcher. She's our client care specialist. Uh, she also does not have a mug. So here I'm throwing one at your way, Dale, and my husband doesn't have one, and my own team doesn't have this fabulous mug. So that tells you how special you are to get one of these mugs when you win, right? That makes it even more important that you uh, comment on the videos on Friday. So that's all you guys have to do, Jacqueline, Dave, you guys have to comment on my videos on Fridays when they come out and then you'll be entered to win a mug. Deal? <laughs> all right, so <laughs> print sales. So this guy, um, he, <laughs> This guy uh, was arguing with me for probably 20 minutes, you know, one of those conversations that you're trying to find a graceful exit out of, but he insisted that book sales were down. And I was insisting that they weren't. Uh, and so the interesting part that a lot of people get confused by, <laughs> I'm just watching the comments coming through right now, um, my husband rolling his eyes at me, which is something he never does in person. But <laughs> uh, so the a lot of people, I think book sales are down. But in reality, they're actually uh, fairly level. And in, in fact, they've actually gone up. So unit sales of print books were up 1.9% uh, in 2017 over 2016. And I think there was one stat in here that I wanted to mention. This is from Publishers Weekly. And this is this is from January, but I wanted to bring it back up because, because of this conversation. Um, yeah, exactly. Dale says they went up. But interestingly in this, within adult nonfiction, the self-help subcategory had the strongest gains with print sales up 18%, which was pretty high. And print unit sales in the adult nonfiction category were 2.9% higher uh, than in 2016. And looking at the trend overall, uh, they are not going down. What, what has happened, of course, is there's way more books coming out. Um, so you're not seeing those like huge, huge uh, single best-selling books like they used to have. You know, they're, they're not seeing those million dollar, mi or not, um, not million dollar, million unit sold copies anymore because there's more books than ever before to choose from. But people are still buying books, people are still reading books, they're absolutely listening to them in audio. So, it, you know, it's not, a lot of people are like, ah, why bother with a book? People still want books. And by the way, uh, if you write a book, you're kind of creating the industry, you're, you're supporting the very industry that you are a part of because guaranteed, if you're gonna write a book, you're probably gonna buy at least five other books. You should be buying the five best-selling books in your category so that you know what you're competing against so you can be different and stand out. Uh, so there you go. So just by writing one book, you're probably going to be purchasing at least five books. And if you're like me, uh, I'm pretty much surrounded by books all day long. Uh, and, and buy way more than I should. <laughs> I really need to get better at speed reading so I can get through it all. Anyways, um, yeah, so Dale says he's a nerd for stats. I'm not a nerd for stats, I like them, uh, but mostly I just want to remind people that you know we have perceptions and they're not always uh, based on fact. It's based on like you hear something and you go, oh yeah, that, that's, that makes sense and off you go. Uh, and what you may have heard is that you know something was down month over month and it wasn't a good comparison or you may have heard that something in a subcategory um, and sales are shifting by format uh, that's good thank you for that Jacqueline and it's true and and it's 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 a the pie actually I think is getting bigger because a lot of people who are buying 
audio are still buying the print or the print or the the audio ver or the e version as well. So you're actually getting two sales from one client, whereas before you only could get one. Um, so I I do think multiple formats is important, and having it available in multiple formats opens it up. I often have had the print book and then buy the Kindle book later, um, and vice versa. So. Um, uh, crazy like whack. Okay. So Dale just said, I heard the craziest things at the Dayton book expo this past weekend. Crazy like wackadoodle crazy. So hopefully he expands upon that <laughs> wackadoodle crazy. <laughs> That's a good word. I like that. Um, okay. So with that in mind, some of the stuff that we've been digging up about getting your books into bookstores, which for every person that comes to me and says this is important, I always ask why it's really important to you. Um, bookstores, uh, Online, people are still buying through Barnes and Noble and Chapters Indigo in Canada, um, but actually going into the physical bookstore and buying books is happening less and less. Um, and you know, for me, I, I really love to support the indie book, the independent bookstores. So if you are buying from uh, bookstores, going into those indie um, Dogman Books uses Snickerdoodle Dave. <laughs> okay, uh, Wackadoodle and Snickerdoodle. Okay. <laughs> Um, so go, like going into an indie bookstore, for example, is a great experience as an author. Highly, highly recommend you do it. Indi your local independent bookstore could be one of your greatest supporters. Um, harder to get support from those big chains like Chapters Indigo. My, my local Chapters Indigo when I was in Nanaimo uh, in Canada wouldn't hold a book signing event for me. I did book signing events in Bloor in Toronto, Chapters in Bloor Street, which is one of the biggest chapters stores in Canada. Uh, I did it in Victoria and, and you know all over, and yet my local store would not host a signing for me, but local independents would. And so um, I'm, I'm a big fan of independents for that reason. But all that is to say, as an independent author, you can get your book into bookstores, but it takes extra effort and you may not need to worry about it because more than 80% of sales right now are happening online. And so you're only fighting for that tiny portion. And unless you really believe that it's the best place to reach your ideal reader, you may be spending a lot of time for minimal effort. So you might want to be strategic, choose a few stores so you can experience that feeling of seeing your book on the bookshelf in a store, which is pretty cool. <laughs> um, yes, and so I'm getting, I'm kind of getting to that point, Jacqueline, but thank you for mentioning my local independent store uh, lets authors sell on consignment. So a few things um, to get your book into the bookstores. Number one, you have to have an ISBN number. You can't use the free one that you get if you upload your book through Create Space. Uh, you, you have to have your own ISBN number, which in Canada you can get for free. Um, in the States, you have to buy from a company like Bowker. Boker. I always go through this. I never know how to say it. <laughs> I'm just going to call it my Canadian accent and call it Bowker. But <laughs> if it's wrong, just blame it on my accent, okay? Um, uh, and then you must use Ingram Spark for the extended distribution. I know on Create Space it says if you check this box, that's extended distribution. The reality is no bookstore is going to order from Amazon. They're not going to order from Amazon for two big reasons. One, it's Amazon, right? their biggest competitor. It's putting them out of business. It's squeezing their margins. So they're not going to order for that reason. The second reason is there's no profit. There's no, uh, the margins very small uh, for them to order through the Amazon anyway. So through create space. So to get extended distribution, to get your book in the position where a bookstore will actually order it, you have to order, upload it to Ingram spark. So you can still use create space for your amazon.com distribution, but everywhere else you're going to want to have it on Ingram spark to get it in the Ingram catalog. Now, with that in mind, you also must make sure that you check off the box that says your books must be returnable. If they're not returnable, bookstores will not order, period. Now, here's the lesson that if you've watched my YouTube channel, you know that I learned the hard way, and that is make it returnable, but destroy. You don't want those bad boys sent back to you, as horrifying as it is, because here's me going, return and destroy. No, no, my babies, no, no, don't kill my babies. Don't kill my babies. Yeah. No, let them kill your babies because it's really expensive if they send your babies back to you. So those books, um, let them destroy it. Let them do whatever they want to it. Uh, don't get them sent back to you because that's very, very expensive, right? That was funny, guys, right? Where's the laughter? Where's the, ha the nothing? All right. You gross. All right. Fine. <laughs> okay. Fine. <laughs> Lulu is another way to get the expanded distribution. Oh, it just went off my screen. Um, hopefully you guys can read it. There we go. Thank you. Thank you for the laughter. Okay. Um, now let's see. Oh, 
okay, so getting your bookstore into the bookstores. And there's some great comments, <laughs> some great comments coming in on other ways to do it. So you guys can check that out uh, as you're watching this as well. Um, so number one, uh, I and my book was in bookstores all across Canada, but it's, it's extra work as an independent. So if you do think it's worth it, you might want to get help with this. Um, that's something we're working on doing for our clients at Book Launchers. We're, we're trying to solve this distribution problem and really be strategic with what we're going to do for our clients to get it into the most important stores for our client to be in front of their ideal reader. Um, but uh, one of the key things is to sell a lot of books before you start selling, uh, before you start approaching the bookstores. So you really want to have a strong Amazon ranking because if you're going to approach a bookstore, they're going to want to know if they're going to be able to sell through this. So if they're not taking your book on consignment, having strong sales will help because that's one of the, you know, I did, I approached bookstores about three or four months after my book came out and my book was doing, had performed extremely well. Um, was in the top 100 overall at Amazon for 45 days. So when I approached bookstores, they looked up the sales history and were like, okay, yeah, and they brought it in. Um, having book signing events at the bookstores helped uh, and telling them my marketing plan around that, which was a lot of media. I did, I did a lot of media to get my books in the bookstores. Uh, and so that kind of stuff is important. They're gonna care about that stuff. They need to know your book has a marketing plan to get the book off of their shelves. They don't have very much shelf space, so it's really, really important. Uh, and then finally, uh, as Jacqueline mentioned, many of the independent stores will offer and even chapters Indigo in Canada. I haven't looked into Barnes and Noble. Uh, I think it's also an op option for certain stores at Barnes and Noble. Uh, they'll do consignment. Consignment as an author is a bit of a pain. You're basically giving them the books. Um, well, you know how consignment works, right? Uh, so it's a bit of a pain on, on your side, but if it's really important to get it on the shelves and start, uh, and if you want to market the heck out of it, if you sell through, uh, they're probably going to start to carry it. Uh, a couple other people have ninja strategies. They say it works. I don't know if it works. I haven't done it, but they'll leave their book on the bookshelves uh, when it's not listed. And then somebody tries to buy it. And guess what? <laughs> they go in the system and they're like, well, we don't carry this book, but uh, you know, we're going to try to sell it to you. Or they then want to list it because people wanted to buy it. I've been told that works. I haven't tried it, um, but that is another another approach. <laughs> Call it the ninja strategy for getting your book on bookshelves. I know my husband Dave uh, told me that somebody somebody we know did that, and and I just heard actually I think um, Honoré Cordaire has a book. Uh, I might even have it here. Oh no, I, I read it on Kindle. I, I reviewed it last in my last live video. Um, all the ways to get readers. And I think that was one of the ways that she mentioned even in the book that she would leave it in bookstores even if they didn't carry it. And sometimes it led to bookstore listings. So there you go, who knows? Lots of ways to get it into bookstores. Uh, be strategic because it does take a lot of time and you're probably better off trying to find a bulk place. <laughs> well, yeah, I get you. I get you, Jacqueline. That's why I've never done it. It is kind of weird, but I've heard it from multiple sources, so I thought I would share it. If anybody else has done it here or <laughs> has heard of anyone else doing it, be sure to let us know how that worked for them. Um, I lost my train of thought. So, um, okay. I think that's, oh, Amazon store. That was the other thing I wanted to mention. So uh, Jacqueline went into her local Amazon store and asked them how they were choosing the books that they were buying. And they said it was based on the top 1000 uh, books sold on Amazon, which makes sense. It's an Amazon store. So that's how you get your Amazon listing. Um, independent stores are choosing uh, what books they'll buy based on a variety of factors. And it's going to vary store by store. So you're basically going to want to just go in and talk to your local bookstore manager or bookstore owner and find out, but it's gonna be based on their demographics, it's going to be based on uh, you know, you know, what they already know people buy, and also sales numbers, because that's gonna matter. Like I said, that, that made a big difference in me getting bookstore distribution. And also, um, trying to think if there was anything else that came up. Oh, and sales reps, there are sales reps out there that go around and, and talk to the bookstores or email them with promotions and different things like that. There's different catalogs that they might browse to find books that might be of interest to their demographics. So um, those are some things to keep in mind too for bookstore distribution. Cool, Any anybody got questions or comments you wanna to add to that? Oh, airport and display space, that's for sale. Um, there's like a tiny portion of the airport bookstore shelves that will be decided by sales sales numbers. But in large part, um, the lot of the airport displays and even the large bookstore displays, that's for sale. Kind of like the grocery stores, if anybody's ever worked in retail. You know, shelf space in grocery stores is actually for sale too. Uh, so 
It's uh, it's pretty crazy. Uh, you're not going to be able to afford that. That's why you always see like a Malcolm Gladwell or a Michael Connolly taking up those spaces because their publishers um, spend a lot of money on display for those things. And you know the average author is not going to get that space in here otherwise. So uh, just so you know how that works. Okay. Um, I think that's all I have for you guys. Yeah, that's great. So Amazon stores have no local control over their book select selection. So uh, no ninja tactics will work there. And there's a lot to be said for that. Um, it's kind of, it's one of the reasons why I think Amazon lists are really great. They have Amazon charts now, and it's based on real sa sales data. Uh, unlike, you know, New York Times bestseller, which is, has a lot of discretion involved. Multiple people have said uh, that they should have been on the New York Times bestseller, but they weren't. Oh yeah, Tim, you just logged in at the end, but you know, we're happy to have you. So hello and welcome. <laughs> Hope things are going well on the island. I'm just laughing when people are walking by and making funny faces at me in my office. <laughs> Yeah, Dave said it's Tim at um, Tim at the island dot com. <laughs> Not really. I think we have two two islanders on here. So welcome, guys. Uh, yeah, so I think I think that's all I have for you guys. So thank you again for joining in. Our next live will be May 15th at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So mark it in your calendar, set your reminder, Tim, and then come at two o'clock uh, when we're starting. <laughs> Uh, and then you won't be late to the party and you won't be missing out. So May 15th, 2 p.m. Um, oh, I almost forgot. I have to do one more draw. There's one more draw to be made. So let me just uh, switch this up here. And uh, yeah, in case anybody's wondering when our next live stream is, it'll be two days before my husband's birthday. So, uh, you know, just put that on your calendar two days before my husband's birthday. That simplifies it, right? Okay, so if you entered for your book to be reviewed, uh, this review will be happening May 29th at 2 p.m. on our live stream then, but our next live stream uh, is 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Yes, my email newsletter is a helpful reminder of this. All right, so here we go. Um, here, so you guys can see I'm not cheating. I don't want you to think that I'm trying to rig this Amazon because I can't get it out. Okay, there we go. I might have two. Eh, okay, I need, a, I need a helper. All right, here we go. So this is for the next Amazon book review that I'll be doing. And it is The Stone Builder Rejected by J. Law. All right, so this is backwards. You guys put this in the mirror and then you'll know. <laughs> so that's the book I'll be reviewing on May 29th. Um, if that is your book, you might wanna contact me. I gave you some tips based on Katie's review, but I'll be buying it on Kindle and, uh, and doing a review on the 29th. So thank you so much. Thanks, Paul. Uh, thanks, Paul, for stopping by. Thanks, everyone, for being here. I'll see you again May 15th at 2 p.m. Pacific, which is 5 p.m. Eastern. Um, and uh, thanks again, Dale, for bringing some of your friends. <laughs> Bye, guys.